Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today in this episode of how to color, I want to show you how to color a night sky. Last time in the last episode, I showed you how to color snow with five different brands of coloring pencils. And I used this book Sternfall by the Swedish illustrator Maria Tolle and this book Winter Song by the American illustrator Ellie Marx. This was the drawing that I colored and I used the Faber Castle Polychromos, which is an oil based pencil here. The Koinor, also an old base pencil on the snow, and this part of the snow was colored with the Castle Art, a wax based pencil. Then I showed you a color of a snowman colored with Carandage Luminance that I did in December in my Christmas coloring challenge. If you hear some noise, it's my dog. He's quite excited because it's snowing outside. Nice. And um, this picture from Winter Song was colored with the Prismacolor uh, pencils. So I promised that I wanted to show you how to color a night sky and this is a winter night sky. I have some examples of other night skies. We have a normal summer night sky. We have this light blue sky and as we move towards the star level it gets darker and darker in the colors. You could also color a sunset landscape here. We can see the golden and pink colors move towards the blue colors and the darkest blue colors are right at the edge of this picture. But as I said before, this is a winter night sky and they are quite different from summer and spring night skies. They are a lot darker, uh, only lit up by the moon and stars. We can see here I have already uh, placed that there will be some light from this moon, but otherwise it will be quite dark, only lit up by the stars and we also have some snowflakes. So this is one way of coloring a night sky and this would be colored with dark colors. But this uh, picture is quite different because we have a street lamp and this street lamp will shed light down on the snow. I've already marked where the light is. Here we have the ice and the snowman ice skating. So the night sky behind will be quite different because some of it will be lit up by this street light and then it will be darker in the edges. So I will now show you how I would color these two uh, night skies. Let's get to it. We'll start with this uh, drawing from Sternfall by Maria Trolle. As you can see, uh, it's really a winter night sky. We have all this snow. We have not a full moon, but a crescent moon. We have a couple of stars and then we have the snow. So I have researched as I always do. And I just want to, um, to show you these pictures. Just have to find them here. Oh, wow, it was really slow, my phone. So I have just Googled and uh, found some different kinds of um, night skies. And you can see this one. This is with uh, a lot of stars. And you can see that in the middle, it's a, a sort of brighter, but still dark blue color. And then it turns, perhaps in the transition, some sort of indigo blue and then black with a lot of stars. So it's actually quite a bright bright uh, night sky, this one. If we look at this one, and it's the top one, I mean, we can see that we have some sort of a, a darker blue color here, and then it turns almost immediately into a black sky with some stars and then just a completely black sky. But these two pictures, they don't uh, um, take into account the full moon of the crescent moon. So you can see here a picture I found with a full moon and when the moon is full it's really bright and really lights up the sky. You can see here that the dark just begins um, at, well above the full moon I would say and then it's very uh, light down here but I also think that this is some sort of a twilight uh, scene. It's not completely dark yet. 
and we have to remember that we have this crescent moon and it's not the same as a full moon and it's not quite big actually it's, it's rather small so i have decided to use only four colors and i have decided also to use the polychromos from faber castell because all of this snow well, most of it is colored with the polychromos so i will be using the white around the moon and the stars and then as my lightest color lightest uh the indian rain blue which is a quite a dark uh, blue color and then the indigo dark indigo and the black and you can see here i have also consulted again from colorwithclair.com my color family chart for the polychromos and you can clearly see here that the dark indigo is quite the darkest of the colors here you can see here the prussian blue in the this other color family is not nearly as dark as the dark indigo you could also see that the indian rain blue is next in line in this color family here which also consists of the helio blue reddish the cobalt blue greenish and the cobalt blue and then we have the black all the way down here so i think that these uh, four color choices are actually quite good and will suit this purpose very well of course i will also have to use a posca pen and white gel pens to add some more snow and to color the stars and so on but let's just get to it and uh, start with this coloring so I will start with the white and I well, I will just clean my white. There was some blue on it. So I will just start by coloring just lightly the moon and just around it because I want, I want it to be more light around the moon. I will not do this with uh, the snowflakes, but I will also do this with the stars. Just so I know that they will they will shine and I want some sort of a lighter color around the stars. And one way to make sure of this is by coloring it white before I add the darker colors. It's easier when you have the light color underneath then color with some dark above or on top of it then if you have the dark color and then trying to add some white and trying to lighten it it's not always a, a success i must say so we have these five stars and uh, the moon and uh, hmm oh i don't know about the smoke i think that i will also just color the edges of the smoke from the chimney uh, not necessarily to um, to make the color when I color with the dark blue colors lighter, but to um, mark the edges of this smoke because I have a feeling that I might use a white Posca pen later um, to mark the edges of the smoke and then it will be a little bit easier if I have already added this white on top of the black line and perhaps it would also make me remember to add the white Posca yeah that's it so I um, we will have to to think uh, a little I think that we need this uh, intense rain blue which is the lightest of these dark colors and it is quite dark um, to be here around this area so the first perhaps third just above the moon i think and then the indigo blue and the black here so let's start and uh, these are oil-based pencils so you will have to remember to uh, press very lightly it will make it easier to layer and later blend as i showed you when i colored the snow and i think that the polychromos really is a nice pencil to uh, this coloring book 
So I will have to be careful not to go too much up above this moon. Perhaps just a little bit here. We can see by the snow that I have imagined that the light from the moon will light up the snow to around here. So I think that this lightest of the blue colors have has to be here. And then you can see here with the white that I just, just add a little bit of blue. Um, and you can also see here that I have imagined that it will still be a bit light here. We have to remember that even this moon is small, it's uh, up in the sky quite high, so uh, uh, some larger parts of the snow will be lit up by this uh, moonlight. Here by the roof, you can see here. And just to uh, last time, I actually added the Posca pen here at the edges of the roof and here. I really shouldn't have but I wanted you to see what it looks like when you um, mark the snow the edges of the snow with a white Posca but you can see here now I am in trouble so I will have to um, add the Posca again after this coloring. So you can see here um, that the snow is light and here so um, we will have to have this color just around here but not further on and that's because we are reaching the boundaries of where the moonlight will shine you can already see it's turning quite darker here in the snow we just have a little light spot here so i just want the snow to be here and then i just want to correct the edges of this line here and over here with the tree, just perhaps a little bit here. You can see here. So this is where it's lightest in the sky, in this dark sky. Mm, I think that I want it to be a bit lighter here. Just a little bit to better match the snow over here. And that's it. So now I will use the indigo blue. And the indigo blue is really, really dark. You can see here that it almost, it's not as, quite as dark as uh, the black, but when you just add a light layer, it, it almost, in in a certain light, it looks like it's black. It's a more dark color, this uh, indigo blue from the Polychroma set, than if you compare it to, let's say, the Prisma colors. Uh, the indigo blue there is not quite as dark as this one. And that's because there are some differences from brand to brand about how the colors really are. Okay, so see here we have this part of the picture is within these lines and then we have the trees. So I think that I will follow the trees to add the indigo blue here instead of stopping there. And you can see I am just adding this very light layer. And then uh, you will have to decide for yourself if you're coloring, color, coloring along in this book, if you want to go up and just make a sort of a, a round circle here, or if you want to follow the, the, um, the branches here in the trees, and then it will be more like this. And around so that's up to you I think that I am um, want to follow the branches instead of just making a um, 
and almost round circle around these trees. And then I will also have to remember when I wanted the black to begin. I think that I will have to color in here to see it more clearly, just very lightly around the star. And try not to get any color on the snowflakes. Um, I know you can just use a white Posca to uh, color on top of the color. But I have noticed that if I um, color with dark colors, it's not that easy for the Posca pens to um, to just do it one time and then it's covered. I have to do it several times sometimes to uh, to cover a darker base of color underneath the Posca. So um, that's why I try my best not to color the snowflakes and other things that I need to um, stand out as more white in the picture when I color. So I will just have to um, And now I really have to decide when I want the black to begin because this is a night sky, but still we have the moon. And um, I think I want just a little bit more of the dark indigo to stretch. Oh, and here, if I just mark this line here. I think that um, if I do this, I will mark the edges of where the sky is going to turn black. So I'm still marking it and um, have to remember to um, mark the edges here. And then all of this will be colored with the indigo. So let's see what it looks like when we add the black over here. I think that I want to um, just do the edges first as much as I can before I start coloring inwards towards this transition. So when you do it like this, it almost looks like that you are adding the leaves, the crown to the tree, if you know what I mean. So it's not just branches reaching up towards the sky, but rather a tree as it looks like when it's spring and summer. can see here that I just follow the edges of the branches here. And carefully around the star. And 
then I will go upwards towards the branches on the next tree. And then you can well start to see what it will look like. So if we just finish this bit here. And also this one over here. And here. And here you can get a more clearer picture of how it's going to um, look like when we're finished. But now I will just color lightly the rest of it and uh, you can listen to some music while I do it. Okay, that's it. Oh, that's not it because I have to layer it some more. But uh, we get a clear idea about how this night sky will look like with the lightest of the blue here around the moon. And then it's, it just gets darker towards the starlit sky up here with these gigantic trees, I must say. So now i will just layer and color the rest and you can also do that and then i will show you the results so this video will not be too long but before i do that i have to ask you do you like what you see is this a uh, good advice for you who are on your own coloring journey if so please like and subscribe to my channel and make sure that you also hit the notifications bell so that you will be notified every time I release the next video. I have this how to color series. I have beginner tutorials. I have practice tutorials. I have reviews on my channel. I unbox and swatch and test uh, different brands of coloring pencils. So if you think that you can use this information on your coloring journey, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Now I have finished uh, layering and blending the colors and I think that the result was quite nice. I like that I uh, did the edges here around the trees instead of just 
all of it around. So I think it looks quite nice to have followed the trees. Um, and for some reason, it looks like I have had, you know, an, a sort of an edge here. But I think it's because um, the branches go in. So it's almost impossible not to have some sort of an edge here. It's... Um, Looks a bit strange, but I assure you that when I colored, I tried really hard not to make an edge, but it really looks like an edge. I have also used my white to just, uh, after I had finished coloring, to um, add some more around the stars here, um, but not the snowflakes. And I have just taken my Posca and added the white here along these edges. And I can see that I had just missed some of the blue color here. So now that it's done, I think that I um, want to uh, color the moon more white. And also to um, get rid of these dark edges. So I think it looks very nice to just take the Posca and uh, paint the moon right here. And you can see I have just added some white because sometimes when you look at the crescent moon, you can see um, some sort of light. I don't know if it's from the sun or whatever, but you can sort of see the rest of the of the moon just a little perhaps just a little bit of a shine there so i've tried to make it in uh, make it in the white color so uh, now i will have to add some uh, snow and i will also use my posca for this and it's so much easier when these snowflakes are not colored with the dark colors to just Add some white Posca, and then you don't have to uh, add so many layers of the Posca. Oops. It's going to be some big snowflakes here. And here. And I think that I... Um, might take a smaller white gel pen and add some smaller snowflakes, smaller white dots here. I think yeah, that was a star. So I will take this jelly roll from Sakura and just add small dots here and there yeah well they don't have to be snowflakes i mean they could also just be far away stars on this night sky you can interpret them as you want i think that these white ones will be snowflakes so we have different sizes of snowflakes and also a bit down here and i might when i have i will not do this in this video but i when i have colored the trees in the house uh, i might add some snowflakes here on the rest of the drawing just to show that this is snowflakes because we don't have stars down here Perhaps if I added some snowflakes here, it wouldn't look so divided. And it's quite fun to just add these little dots of snow. And of course, I will also have to um, color this smoke. So, what about the stars? Well, I think that because the stars are sort of glittery and um, I think that when it's winter, I think that the stars are more silvery glittering than gold glittering. So I will use my pencil Sparkle Pop. You know it because I have used it in so many of my videos to 
color the stars. So they will be silver glittering. And the last one here. I mean, if you would go all in, you could also add some tiny silver sparks just to hint that there are other stars in the night sky. So, well, you know my motto. Glitter, glitter, glitter. Well, that's not my motto, but I do like glitter. So... I think that I will just hint some more stars on the night sky. But you could also choose not to add any more snowflakes and, and stars. So you can just go with what Maria Trolle already has uh, drawn on this page. Or if you just wanted a completely dark sky, you could color the snowflakes, cover them with color and also the stars and perhaps the moon, and then it would just be a very dark winter night. Yeah, I think that if you wanted to make this a day scene, it would be hard with uh, bright blue colors. The sky is uh, nice and blue. If it's a frosty uh, winter day with sun and a clear sky, I think it would be very hard to uh, cover up the moon and the stars. So I think that this is a, a good night scene. Otherwise, it should be just a gray day. So I think it looks very nice, this one. So this is an example of how you can color a really dark winter night sky. But what if you have a, uh, a scene with some artificial light, like a street lamp? Well, I'm going to show you that next. Uh, as I have colored this one with the Prisma colors, I want to continue coloring with the Prisma colors here. And you can see I have already found uh, my wonderful color family chart from the Color with Claire for the Prisma colors. So I have now researched a little bit and um, just want to show you some pictures that I have uh, here on my phone. You can see here this reminds of, of this street lamp right here. And you can see here that uh, this one is just taken up towards the sky. And you can see here we have a clear blue color and then it uh, turns darker here. And we have some sort of a transition here. Hope you can see it. It's sort of, well, I think blue violet actually. So if I compare here uh, to these colors, I think that I would have to, if I go with this one, I would choose cobalt blue, um, then I would have a layer of ultramarine violet blue and then the Indian throne blue and perhaps uh, black at the very top of this uh, picture. But we still have this light. So I have another picture here also of uh, street lights and you can see that on this picture, they just light up the immediate surroundings and not so much. We have a little light down on the street, but not so much. Uh, the sky is still very dark here around, but you can also see it's clouded. So where the clouds are not, the sky is actually lighter. Finally, I have this picture where you can see clearly that the light from this street lamp shines down upon the road and lights it up. And then we have immediate darkness around the light. And then it, uh, when you move away from the street light, this artificial light, you can see that it turns brighter and more blue and not so dark and black like this. So I will now have to choose if I want to color this with light shining down like in this picture. And if I want it to be completely black and then lighter blue, or if I want to go with these colors where it's blue and then turns black. So when I have decided, I will look at my color family chart and choose the colors. But I still think that I will go with these very dark blue colors for the blue colors uh, instead of this color family. They are much lighter and brighter. And I think that the sky is really 
dark so we will have to go with these uh, dark colors so this is a way how you can choose colors for your um, coloring project for your drawing well i have thought about it and i have now chosen that i do want light from this street uh, lamp to shine down upon the snowman and the snow and um then the night sky behind it but i don't want it to be those oranges colors so i have uh, chosen for the light the cream pc 914 the uh, it's really hard to see it's not very big this one it's the deco yellow pc 1011 and then some bright yellow light uh, the lemon yellow pc 915 I will also have to color the snowman and this snowman will be colored uh, with some slightly different colors than this snow because he's lit up uh, by the light from the street lamp. So instead of those dark purplish colors, I want to use uh, someone slightly different. Uh, normally I would have used slate gray and jade green and blush pink. For this one but because the light shines down the colors will be somewhat paler so i have chosen for the dark blue color periwinkle pc 1025 for the green color uh celadon or Keladon green pc 1020 instead of the blush pink i have chosen the deco peach pc 1013 i have of course my white PC 938. I have chosen to um, stay with the powder blue PC 1087 to the light blue colors to, to mix the other colors. And then, of course, I will have the deco yellow again PC 1011 to add the light here on top of the snowman. And uh, normally, as I said, I would have used some other colors, but you can see here from the color family chart, I really, really love this color family chart, that slate gray, the next color in this family is periwinkle, so it's slightly lighter in the color, and the powder blue really goes well because they are in the same family, and that's why I'm not switching to sky blue light or cloud blue, because they are a part of a different color family. So they wouldn't uh, go well with this. You can also see that the jade green is in the same color family as the celadon green. And it's just a bit lighter. And that's why I have chosen them. You can also see here the blush pink, the deco peach is actually in the same color family. Not the deco pink. It's up here with the pink rose, rosy beige and clay rose. So this color family chart, I can really recommend it because it's absolutely brilliant when you want to choose your colors and you think that, well, what color would go with this other color? You can choose from the family chart here. So if we begin, if you remember from the picture, as I said, I really use these pictures as a reference. You can see that these street lamps, the brightest color is from the bottom of the lamp and then it turns lighter. And you can see here also that the lightest color here and then it comes down in darker colors on the snow. But still, I don't want these red orange light colors. So I want um, these ones. So I will use the lemon yellow. And this will all have to be done before I color the night sky. So that's why we start with this one. So this light lemon yellow at the bottom of the lamp. Just a little layer of the deco yellow. And then the cream. And then I just dampen the other colors just a bit by blending the cream with the other colors. So it's yellow here, down here, more yellow, but it's not too much. You can see here clearly. Um, I think that this top will be in another color. I will find out later. So the light shines down. We have the cream here. I think that I actually want to add just a touch of deco yellow 
at the very top of the snow to hint that the color from the lamb really hits the snow here. Um, so I also want to show that this light hits the snowman from above, which means that I will color the top of the snowman, the edges here and also here, this little hat, with this color and the things that are uh, more in the shade will not be colored. This one will not be as bright because this one will shadow for this part of the hat. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And then because this is lit up, I want the dark color to come from down here. So he will be dark from below. And remember, just a light pressure. You can also see that uh, this little hat here will shadow on his head. Just add a touch of green here to um, darken this bit, which is in shadow, and then you move down, perhaps just add a little bit of this green. And instead of the blush pink, we will add this deco beach, peach, not beach, peach, <laughs> to add some uh, depth to the darkest areas. And then we will take the powder blue and add it on top of the blue, green and peach and pull it just gently up toward the light. And a bit further. And this area is more in shadow, so almost everything will be blue down here. So this is actually another way of uh, coloring snow with the Prismacolors, another color combination than this one. Um, I actually think that this one will just add a little bit of a shadow here. So, um, And then you know what to do, you just add layers. I think that because there is so much light, I will not just use the deco pink, but also some cream to mix in here with the snow to really show that the light hits this uh, snowman from above. And then we have our white. But if you saw the last episode, you know what to do from now. So I will just um, pause and then I will show you the result of this so we can get on with the night sky. As you can see now, I have finished coloring the street lamp. I added a bit of deco yellow on top of these black because you remember from one of the pictures that I found on the internet, of course that the light shines down on this uh, lamp and this black, I don't know what, iron or whatever it's made of, I think it's iron, uh, is lit up by the lamp. On top of it, I have just colored it uh, the cool gray PC 1067. And um, then you can see I added some more of uh, the deco yellow here at the front of the hat and just round this back part of it and some more both on the snowman his arms and the skates i also added this cool gray 90 percent 
here, around the edges, around the hat here, uh, and also here and here to um, hint a bit more shadow. And then I just colored with the white on top of it so it wouldn't stand out so much. I've also covered all of the lines with this white and blended and mixed also with the white. So um, this is the result. I have also decided that I don't want a lot of light coloring with the yellow from this street lamp. I have hinted a shadow here on the eyes, which I will co color later, but I want to color this night sky and I don't want too much of this yellow color to be in the way. So I have decided to add a, a f I, think, I think it's the sixth color uh, to this. So I will start with the Cobalt Blue Hue PC133. And this area down here will be the lightest and I will color it with this one. Then I will use the China Blue as uh, some sort of a transition color from the lighter color up to the darker colors. And that's PC1100. Then I will have just a little bit of the Ultramarine PC902 also as some sort of a transition color up to the Violet Blue PC933 which will then be a transition color to the darkest of the blue colors, the Indanthrone Blue, PC208. And then at the very top of this night sky, I will use just a little bit of black, PC935, because the darkest of the winter night sky is truly black. So let's see what happens when we start. You can also see that I have not sharpened my pencil very much and that's because, well, I have to layer a lot and if my pencils, the Prismacolor pencils, if they are too sharp, then I will have a lot of trouble layering and blending correctly because I uh, tend to press too hard with the pencils. So um, to prevent this, I won't sharpen these uh, very much. It, it makes it easier for me to layer. Uh, except when I try to lay shadow in small areas and color small areas, then I will sharpen them. So I will start with this cobalt blue hue. And you can see in this book, the color just really comes down on the paper very nicely. So it's really important not to press too hard in this book. The paper isn't thick. It's actually quite thin paper. I think that my printing paper, I have one here. It's a bit thicker than um, this paper in Winter Song. So, um, as you can see, I will just add very lightly this cobalt blue hue. Be very careful around the snowman. When I'm finished with the night sky, I would like to add some Pasca white on, along the edges of uh, some of the snow. Um, and perhaps also the snowman. But it will have to wait until I'm done coloring. So you can see here the lightest of the blue colors. very lightly and uh, try not to color too much on top of the snowflakes. I know that I can use a Posca pen, but if um, this is quite dark blue, then it will get harder for me to color it with the Posca pen. So I try not to color so much on areas that I want to um, be shiny white later. Then I use the China blue as this sort of transition coloring color and you can see they are very much alike and that's because they come from the same color family if you remember from the color family chart here so I will have to uh, remember exactly when I put down the next layer 
where I start and finish with each color. And again, very lightly with the layering and you can see it comes together quite nicely. I want this to be quite dark. So I will turn to um, the Ultramarine. And you can see now it gets darker compared to the other two colors. And I don't want a lot of this color, so just again a little layer here and about a centimeter out. I don't know what it is in inches. I'm not very good at inches and all that. I use centimeters and meters. That's what I learned in school. So here we have the ultramarine and I don't want to add anything more. I want to uh, use the violet blue now and I want to start here. This violet blue and actually color from the snow and up towards the night sky because I want this bit to be quite dark. And then I want the Indian Throne Blue to take over, if you can say that. So I think I want to color up to here, sort of. And then I will continue with the Violet Blue here. Oh, we have some snow in the trees. I think that um, when I color the trees, I will just perhaps use the Posca pen to color that snow. Well, we'll see. So you can see here, um, about here, with this violet blue, which means that I will have to color this bit also this is me trying really hard to uh, layer it lightly but the color is extremely suitable for this coloring book so it's very difficult to um, put the brakes on and not add too much color from the Prismacolors. They work extremely well in this book, I must say. Like the Carandage Luminance, they really work so good. So you can see here, we have this sort of line with the violet blue. Um, perhaps a bit more here, so it's not just a straight line. So more here, and then it goes up and down. And finally, the Indian Throne Blue. And remember what I said, I want the very top of this one to be black. So I think that I will color up to this snow. Perhaps just a bit more here and then the black will be at the top of this. It's actually a Christmas ball, but um, that doesn't really matter. So you can see here. You can already see here that we have the lighter it, and they are not very light blue colors here. And then it just gets darker and darker towards the top of the sky. And be a bit careful here with the tree. I will have to color that eventually to finish this drawing. It's actually quite a nice drawing, not so Christmassy, because it's filled with snow and a snowman. And I know that we find a lot of snowmen around Christmas, uh, but 
I think that snowmen, you can find them all winter, every time it snows, in the autumn and during the winter. So I don't necessarily think about Christmas when I see a snowman. I just think about snow. And then we have this black color. And again, lightly, because this is really, really, really dark. And even though the Indian throne blue uh, is quite dark, the black will be much, much darker. So again, a light, light layer. And there you have it. Of course, I will have to layer and layer and blend, but this will give you an idea about how you can make this night sky. Perhaps I will also add a little bit of yellow outside this one um, to mix with the blue one here along the side of the street lamp. I don't know yet. And perhaps also around these parts of the lamp, but actually I think it's a good nose. So I will just layer and blend and then I will show you the result. The coloring is finished and I am actually quite satisfied with the result. You can see here I colored a little bit more black here to, um, to just dampen the color of the yellow of the light just a bit because down here the light won't uh, be as dominant. You can see here, we can still see the light here on the snowman. And you can see here how it's the lightest of the blue colors here and how it just intertwines up towards the black night sky. Now I need to color the snow, of course, and the rest of the, of the drawing. I can also see I've added just a little bit of a white Posca marker here. Uh, and then I will finish this and I will show you the final result. But this is certainly how you can make a winter night sky with artificial light in it. Today's coloring session is over. I have shown you how to color a winter night sky in two different ways. This one in Stjernfall by Maria Trolle, where it's just lit up by the stars and the moon. And this one where we have some artificial light from a lamp, a street lamp or a lake lamp, um, lighting up this scene. As you can see here, just a bit of light around the moon and then it just turns darker still. Here, brighter colors, more blue colors, and then it turns to the dark colors and then finally black. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this how to color video. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you already have. not um, And I want to thank you for watching these videos and supporting me by subscribing to my channel. You're also more than welcome to following me on my Facebook page, Cat Coloring. I upload a lot of things that never reach YouTube because I can't film everything I do. Acrylic paintings will also come up uh, in the future months, uh, both on, uh, especially on Facebook, but perhaps also uh, on YouTube. Please write uh, a comment if you would like to see me uh, color other things. If you think that, how do I color this or this or this in a coloring book? Please let me know in the comments and I will try to make a video about it. Uh, I have a lot of coloring books. I don't have everything, but I will try to um, fulfill your wishes or else I perhaps will just draw something myself. I also draw, but I haven't shown any of my drawings yet. Uh, take some courage to do that on video and to show it to the world. Well, thank you for this time again. Thank you for watching this video. Have a very nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.